Here we are in Visual Studio 2010. Before we start setting up our build definition, I'd like to point out some minor modifications I've made to the app we're going to deploy. Here you can see that I'm retrieving a value from the config, and I'm going to set that value in a message to display on the About page of the application. This is simply to track which configuration was built as we move the application through various deployment phases. And this will make it easy to demonstrate to ourselves that we're actually accomplishing what we set out to do. So when the application is built against the web.config, the value web.config should display on the About page. And when we build the debug configuration, web.debug.config should appear on the About page. And then correspondingly when we build the release configuration, web.release.config should appear in the message. So let's build and run locally to ensure that we're on the right track. And as you can see, the message on the About page contains web.config, as we'd expect. So now we'll head over to Team Explorer and spin up a new build definition. The default name is fine, and the default trigger of manual is also fine for now. But I'm going to modify the workspace to be slightly more targeted and have it operate on the main line of code that we're going to build. And then in the build defaults, we'll set the drop location. And then on to the process tab. Now here I'm going to manually set the build configuration to debug for any CPU. And this is going to allow us to test our debug message that uh, we were going to put on the About page. And then down here we will expand the Advanced node. And you can see here there's an area for us to enter MS Build arguments. Now here I've placed all of the MS build arguments that I'm going to supply to the build definition in a text file so that I can modify them more easily than having to do it in the build definition dialog. Using the P switch, which is short for property, we can supply each of the MS build arguments as key value pairs. And so you can see here that I have all of the arguments that we talked about earlier in a single string. So I'm going to select the entire string and copy it to the clipboard. And we'll paste it down here. So now we can save our build definition. But before we actually queue up a build, I'm going to bring up the server and show that under the default website, we currently do not have a CD demo application. So now we can queue a new build. And we can see that it has completed. So let's go in and take a look at the log. And you can see down here, those are all the build arguments that we passed into MS Build. And it appears that everything went well, so let's take a look at our server. you can see we have a CD demo app now. So let's take a look and see. And we can get to our new application. And if we click about, we can see that we built the debug configuration. And we can also come back into our uh, into our build definition. And if we come in here and change the configuration that we're going to build to the release config, we'll save that. And if we queue another new build, 
So the expected result here is that we will now have web.release.config in our message. And if we, re we refresh the page, we see that is the case. So I've shown you how to build different configurations to illustrate a point. Being able to set the configuration value in the build definition makes it easy for us to create different build definitions for different target environments. So if we wanted to build our application to go onto a QA server, we could create a new configuration. Using Configuration Manager, we can create a new configuration for QA or for lab or for whatever environment that you would like and then you mate that configuration and its corresponding config configuration transform with a build definition and that allows you to have a pipeline for each configuration that you need that you need built for each target environment so that covers the deployment part of continuous deployment but we're still missing continuous so to enable that we need to go back to our build definition go to the trigger and we can set this to, con uh, to continuous integration, save the build definition, and then to make it happen, we just need to make a change to a code file and check that in. Now we just need to check that change in. And if we come back to our Build Explorer, we can see that there's one in progress and it was a continuous integration build. We'll wait for that to finish. And now that it's completed green, we can come back up here and refresh our application again. And we see that we were able to get that change deployed simply by checking in a code file. We started with a simple ASP.NET web app, created a new build definition with some minor customizations, and we are deploying our application to a test environment upon every source code commit. That's continuous deployment in a nutshell.